guys, John here, and I have been playing around with something a little different, uh, even though it looks probably very similar to, <laughs> to everything else that I've been doing lately. Uh, so this is a wireless transmission in Minecraft, and so I'll give you a quick demo before we get into the way that it works but I just wanted to kind of make a short video about it today, so we'll see. Hopefully I don't make a video that's too long. Uh, but so you can see uh, that receiver back there has just gotten our three bit uh, or technically four bit signal there. Uh, and let's say, so this is using my four bit addressing system uh, which we're just putting in with these uh, levers here. Uh, so I'm just going to choose that address over there. And you can see that we just got our 1-1 one, one there, or 1-2. Uh, so uh, these are, I'm just using that little green part there is just to uh, tag our address. So we can just see what address that is. Uh, and that's going to be our 4-bit output. Uh, so you can see that right now I have uh, with a 4-bit, you know, this is the same addressing system that I used before. Uh, so with the 4-bit addressing system, you can have, you know, up to 15 different uh, receivers. Um, so yeah, this is using the uh, wireless redstone bug. Uh, which you can see that I have a little receiver made here. And then outside of that, uh, you just use the 4-bit addressing system that I used in the previous video. Uh, and this is just the 4-bit output, uh, just a little, you know, deflip-flop section. Um, so to kind of show you what this is, so I was reminded about this by uh, a YouTuber named Chipwreck, who kind of reminded me about it. Uh, because I didn't realize that you could still do this. Um, <clears throat> so previously, the way that I made them uh, was a little different, but I think a lot of a lot of people, I know Navy Nexus also figured this out and came up with, you know, some type of, you know, transmitting and receiving thing. But I don't think he actually had a system to transmit data. Uh, and this is just kind of a quirky little thing, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't really say that this would be useful for anything uh, But anyway So the way that you make these is you just first of all you make a burnout that is uh, With a torch on the south facing side. So right now we're looking uh, south uh, So you put a torch on the south facing side and you're just gonna make a burnout from that and then after that burns out, put a torch on the north side with a block above it. Okay, so because the wireless redstone bug, the way that it works, so first of all, you can see in this setup that both of these are off, so everything is turned off. Uh, and of course, if we, uh, you know, like put a block next to it, then, you know, that's gonna cause it to trip. Now you can see that uh, only this torch on the north side is the one that's turning on, right? And that's the, the way that this works is, is that whenever you put down anything or affect uh, certain redstone things, then that torch is going to turn on, right? And likewise, you can see how on all all of the like the receivers how I have a how I have a lamp on top so anytime like if you look in the back anytime uh, one of these is getting a signal then you can see that lamp light up right okay uh, so the way that you can actually transmit data with these uh, so they're not really affected by uh, things like like redstone. So you see that they'll activate whenever you put something down But whenever you're actually turning things on and off, it's not activating uh, 
uh, except for with pistons. So I'm just using sticky pistons because that's just what I had on, on my inventory. But uh, So you can see that whenever we power and unpower a piston, then that is actually transmitting data, right? Uh, and it's, you know, it's instant too. So like the one way back there, you know, it's in instantly being transmitted back there. Um, so as far as I can tell, this only works inside of the simulation distance. Uh, and likewise, uh, some of the quirks about this, whenever you reload the game, and sometimes when you reload a chunk, uh, these may trigger and go into a burnout. So like if I just play with that one. So now it's going to be back to like a never ending burnout like you would normally expect. Uh, so typically whenever you load the game, that's what they will do. Uh, but using uh, the system like uh, this is, I think this is kind of like what Shipwreck was mentioning that you could use another burnout to power a sticky piston, right? So all we're doing here is uh, using a burnout to where, let's say, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but uh, whenever you load the game, so they're going to be burning out like that <clears throat> but because you have a burnout clock here that's going to power this sticky piston to kind of push this block off. Uh, and you can see that we also have a repeater being powered, a repeater at four ticks uh, being powered by the burnout. That's also going to power the piston. So the whole point is that you just want to push this block off long enough for this torch to burn out, right? Uh, so, like, if it goes into a never-ending burnout, then you remove that block and then put it back. Then you can see we're back to being like a receiver. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, with a little simple setup like that. But, uh, like, like what I said, it only works when you're inside the simulation range. Uh, so, if you load the game and that is outside of the simulation range, then that's probably just going to form a never-ending burnout then you would have to come back and, you know, pop the block off, let it burn out. Or if it doesn't want to burn out. Burn out. <laughs> See, so yeah, it's a bug. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of iffy, you know. You can't really form any really decent technology around it. Uh, but anyway. So yeah, you can actually make a transmitter that can transmit data to, uh, so because it's gonna transmit data to all of the receivers at the same time, you have to have an addressing system like that. Uh, but uh, the way that the transmitter works, because pistons are really the only things that are affected by it, you have to have some type of system to transmit with pistons. Um, and the way that I made that was just by uh, so first, uh, we can use comparators to actually trigger the pistons. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and lay down some here. So if you're familiar with my 4-bit system, or my addressing system, or my receivers in general, uh, the way that they work is that they have to have a, a, first of all, a latch signal. And then you can have your 4-bit uh, address Okay, which we'll use uh, the lamps like that. Uh, and then outside of that, you have to have another latch for the uh, output section. Uh, and then you can have your data inputs on that. So that will represent my data inputs. And again, there are probably other ways to make this a type of transmitter for this, you know, like for the wireless system, but this is just what I was able to come up with. And, you know, it's a bit chunky, but whatever, it's just like a prototype, you know. Oops. Need a block and a block. Ah. I 
Okay. Not there. Ah. Yeah, goofy block placement. Alright, and we need some repeaters here. <clears throat> so all we're doing is making a setup here uh, that will allow us to activate pistons uh, one tick right after the other. Uh, and we're going to make a latch for that like this. And for this for this timing to work, you have to use a wooden button to power it. And it's kind of complicated, but... Um, so we have to activate the pistons one tick after the next piston, right? But if you can see, I don't need that dust. But if you can see, like if you look at that receiver back there, or let's just look at this one because it's closer. So the piston is going to act like a rising and a falling edge detector. So when I power the piston, it's going to flash on the receiver as well as when I unpower the piston, see? So that means that every time we go to activate a piston to send a signal, it's going to, uh, you know, turn on and off, right? So that would send two different signals, which means that uh, to have the proper, you know, like signal array here, I don't even know what you would call it, but anyway, we we'll have to use this. We have to use a wooden button. Uh, because a stone button will give us a bad signal, and that'll mess up our output. Uh, but anyway, so this is a simple transmitter here. And again, like you can use regular pistons, not stickies. But if we go ahead and choose an address, so we can just choose our first address there. Uh, and so we have nothing on the data. So that should erase that. Okay. And if you want to look at the pistons whenever we activate it, you can see what they do. So we had our latch, then our address, and then we had another latch here. Uh, and then if we wanted to send some data, so we can just activate both of those. And you can see what it does. And so there's our first two bits, because that's all we have are two bits there. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the way that it works. Uh, likewise for another address, uh, like that one is uh, 111 over there. Uh, so you can watch the pistons here. So you can see how they send a double signal like that, like they turn on and then off. Uh, but because we're using a 15, you know, 15 tick uh, button here, uh, what that means, the way that the timing works out is that our complete signal are, you know, we're gonna have uh, a four bit plus a latch here, so that's five, and then a four bit plus a latch here, so that's 10. So we have a total of 10 ticks of information being sent, uh, but because we have a 15 tick uh, button here, then that means that that's going to allow it to actually lock the signals into the latch. Uh, and then the latch is going to, you know, lock everything else out after that. Uh, so basically all that means is that we can, you know, send a signal uncorrupted to the wireless outputs but yeah so wireless transmission in minecraft uh, just one way to do it um, i'm sure there are other ways still not very stable because when you uh, you know load a game if it's outside of the simulation range then you know the little receiver part is going to break and you have to go repair that uh, but aside from that it's very stable with the uh you know, like the transmission setup. So because the receivers are using the addressing system. So even though, you know, anytime we're doing anything here, then the receiver is, uh, you know, 
getting a signal. Uh, but unless that signal matches the 4-bit address, then it's not going to matter uh, what you, you know, what is coming in on the receiver, you know. Uh, but anyway, so that's all. thought it was pretty neat. And again, thanks to Shipwreck for kind of reminding me about this bug. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, first uh, wireless transmission, right? Uh, so anyway, that's all. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.